Hello beautiful people. So let's get into this feed in braid tutorial. If you want to see how I got this style, stay tuned. So step one will be the blow drying. I have this really cool attachment that's almost like a comb. And so it really gets the hair straight. And then I'll be using this Kenra blow dry spray as a heat protectant. And the next item I'll be using is this detangling brush by Felicia Leatherwood. I like to detangle, making sure I do it in small sections. When I get a small section, I'm starting to brush from the bottom, make sure the bottom is detangled, and then I move up to the middle and then the root. And that way when you get to the root, if the bottom is detangled, you can move through pretty quickly. So the very first thing that I like to do is spray the blow dry spray, then I will go in and do the detangling and from there I will use the blow dryer. When I'm using the blow dryer, I use the same motion where I start blow drying from the bottom, then I move to the middle and then I move to the root to just really get it sleek. The best thing about preparing your foundation is making sure that you blow dry your hair really well. It doesn't have to be as straight as when you are doing a blowout, or excuse me, a silk press, but you wanna make sure that it's pretty straight. That way when you're going through to part, it's not causing you any issues. And then also it just makes for a better base when you're braiding. Your hair is not sticking out of the braids and it's just going to make the root look really slick. And this is the finished product and let's move on to the setup. So I like to use the technique where I take the braiding hair and put it in sections. I know some people like to leave the braiding hair as one piece and just pull as you go. But I think I actually work quicker when the pieces are already separated. It just helps with better flow. I also got this pink braiding rack from Amazon and I have been loving it because I used to have that little wood one that was sitting on the table and that just was not doing the job anymore. So even though I don't take clients a lot and I mostly braid my daughters in my hair, I still find this rack very useful. It has about 280 pegs. I'll make sure to link it in the comments from Amazon. And then that way I'm just set up. The next important part to set up for is the braiding gel. What braiding gel are you going to use? I like to use the lock and, gel, lock and braid gel because it's thick and I use the shine and jam to do my parts. So how I like to do the technique with my parts is that I like to start parting and get it as straight as possible. After I think it's pretty good, I will separate those two sections and I will go in with the shine and jam. That's why I use two different gels and then I will put I will put that in the part on the scalp and then I will go in with the comb and just really get that part as straight as possible. So that's a little trick to make it easier to part and that's what you see me doing here. Since I'm doing the feed in braid style where there'll be braids in the back and braids in the front, I'm just setting up the scene so that it's easier for me to part each row. I'm starting with the back, the back, and I'll be doing that same technique I told you each time I part. I go in with the shine and jam in the part and I use that to make sure that the part is straight and from there I will use the lock and braid gel that's a little bit thicker and put that on either side of the hair or both sides of the hair and then I will begin to braid. What I really want you to catch in the for this whole video is that whenever you braid you want to start the corn row braiding like you would braid normally and braid it about three times before you go and start pulling hair into the corn row. So how I also like to do my corn row is that I'm not going to feed in any braiding hair until I get past the scalp. Once I get past the scalp, then that's what I will begin to feed in hair. So from here, you will just see me braiding down and then once I get to the end, I will feed in hair.
And so this is when I be will begin to add the hair. I do have a more in-depth video that goes over adding the hair and I will be sure to link that in the comments section. But you're going to feed in from the back and then just feed in until you get the desired thickness. You wanna match the density of the braid that you already started and not make it much bigger than the braid at the top before you started adding hair. At this point, I'm starting at the top and I'm going to do that same motion that I talked about before. I'm going to put the gel in the part and then I'll put the gel on either side of the hair, so on the top and the bottom essentially. And then I make sure to comb in the gel and then I'll start the braid. Like I mentioned prior, I'll take that very first piece in the front of the braid. I will braid that about three times before I start to pull into any hair into the corn row and then once the corn row is complete I will start to feed in the braiding hair and that's just for the length and the density and to match the texture of the braid that I already started. And here's just the last view of me doing the process of adding the gel on either side of the hair before I begin to braid and finish out the corn row.
So my daughter was not feeling the greatest. That's why she has this sad look on her face. So we finished this in about five hours and we decided to just go with curly ends. I do have some other videos where I show how you can curl the ends on my last boho video. I will be sure to link that in the comments as well. But you guys let me know what you think of this style and if you have any questions and I will see you on the next one.